And so I got curious on the things with color and why that was so soothing to me. So that's when I went to school and became a therapeutic art coach. And itself just kind of really intrigued me. So then I learned about colors and things like that and why uh, certain things in, in the color space resonated with me. Um, so that helped me to, to learn more about myself, but also to help it helped me identify different type of people that I was working with and how I could transcribe that for my clients to identify things that they need to look for with their clients. Hey y'all, welcome back to another episode of the Beauty and You podcast. I am so excited and this is my army sister. She's an army vet. I'm serving right now. You know, we got to stick together and I cannot wait for you to hear her story. She is an accomplished author and the creative force behind Blue Impressions Design. Originally from Detroit, Michigan and now residing in Alabama, she brings over 30 years of experience as a graphic artist, weaving, captivating stories and creating inspiring digital art. Her enhancing creations celebrate the human spirit through custom journals, coloring books, and more. As a certified therapeutic art art coach, she empowers inspiring authors to share their unique narratives, guiding them on a journey of creativity and personal discovery. As a retired Army veteran, devoted wife, and loving mother, she infuses her work with resilience and compassion. Welcome to the Beauty and You podcast, Lena Webb. How are you? I'm doing well. Thank you. Thank you so much. How are you this morning? I'm doing well. I can't complain. I can't complain. I'm here. I'm alive. So we're going to do it. (laughs) So as you know, the podcast is called The Beauty and You, and I am so fascinated by other people's stories and how you know, they take what they've gone through and learn the lessons from it. And then they are shining now. So walk me through part of your rediscovery journey. Yeah. So thank you so much for that. So my journey was probably one of the most, well, for me, it's, 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 it was odd, right? So, you know, how you look back on things, you're like, man, all that kind of ties together. So um, early on, like you said, I'm a graphic designer by trade. So I went to school for that. And I figured, you know, at 20, you think you're not making a lot of money. So I worked for a lot of good companies in Detroit. So I thought I wouldn't make a lot of money. And I figured I'd go back to school. So I go back to school. Um, I go back to college. And about, I think, the second semester in, you know, the college politely asked me to leave because I did not have the money to to stay and you know to pay for it so kids gotcha. that that started my career into the army so I went off to Fort Jackson um and was serving doing all the things you know living my best life just just you know serving mm-hmm. and in about night I think I was about in about 19 years um and I wake up one day and go to the doctor take my kids to the doctor and I get this devastating news that I have cancer Oh, okay. So that right there just kind of shifted my world, shifted my life. It shifted everything, everything I thought I knew, everything I thought I loved was questioned, um, how I thought I was going to take care of my kids and my, my family. Um, at that time, I just questioned everything, you know, not knowing what life was going to look like for me, you know, let alone if I was going to be able to continue to to serve, you know, doing the thing that I love, right, which was being all that I could be, right? That's, cool. <laughs> so I, yeah, so I was really just traumatized by by that. And and then um, to add to that, um, I'm still worried about going back, you know, and, and you can relate to this, the Army don't care. They think that once you come back, you're supposed to show up like you was when, 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 when you left, right? Yep. So, um, so I'm in literally in the hospital like every day with my chemo pole, which I gave her name. Her name was Charlene, girl. Me and Charlene <laughs> will, will walk the, the hallways every day because I wanted to stay in shape. So in my mind, I'm thinking I'm going back, you know, when this is over, I, I got to go back because the right. treatment was all inpatient. So it was four months inpatient. So all every every day I would get up and walk. I walked two and a half miles because that was the, the thing for walking right back then. Mm-hmm. Um, so I would get up, walk some two and a half miles. And I know them nurses had to think I was like loony. She was like, she'd get up every morning and push this pole up and down the hall two and a half miles. Um, but that was my mind's way of just uh, being a, giving me something else to do uh, to try and stay focused on something else versus on, on my treatment. And then one day the, the, I get up, wake up and um, I can't see. The chemo treatment has taken my eyesight. Um, oh my I wake up and I'm screaming for the nurse. The nurses, you know, the nurses normally, you know, nurses don't scream, but this nurse, she screamed for the doctor, right? And the doctors, 
came, they called all these specialists and it was traumatic. I mean, you talk about depression. I was like literally depressed. Um, not knowing if I was going to be able to beat the cancer was one thing, but not to add losing my eyesight to it was a whole no another level, right? Um, mm -hmm. Not knowing, not being able to see my kids, not being able to see what was in front of me, not being just not knowing what life was going to look like. So if I thought I was questioning life before with just the diagnosis of leukemia, I was really questioning everything at this point because I'm like, man, is it just going to get worse? You know, mm -hmm. um, so that's the way I felt. And then to add to that, my dad, at the time I was taking care of him and he had cancer. So I knew what it looked like for him, right? I, I knew what that looked like. And I'm like, man, is that what life is about to look like for me? So I, I didn't want to be here. I was like, I don't want to go through that. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't want to take my, the kids through that. I didn't want to go through that, you know? Um, so it was, it was a really dark time, but I, it, you know, it was just, it was, it questioned everything. It questioned everything. Every choice I made, I was like, did I do the right thing? I was a single parent. I'm like, who's going to take care of these kids? And who's going to take care of my dad? And uh, what about the, you know, soldiers I had at the time? I was like, what? You know, everything was in question. Um, but it just, it took me to a really dark place. Um, so it was, it was, it was a challenge. It was, a, it was a really huge challenge. Wow. Yeah. All I can say is, wow. And look yeah. at you now. You're here. Yes. You made it through. Yeah. And what an inspiration. Seriously. Wow. I'm blown away. <laughs> yeah. I'm yeah. blown away by that. What a scary moment. I can't imagine putting myself in those shoes and then not being able to see. I can't. I can't imagine that at yeah. all. Yeah. What strength that you have and you still have to this day. Mm -hmm. You still have to this day. Uh, what are some things that you think got you through that moment? I know going through, you were just like, I got to get through. But looking back and doing some self-reflection, what got you through? I, um, well, I know one of the things that got me through was my faith. My my faith. And God, even though I was questioning things, I still had it. Right. So yeah. just because we have faith doesn't mean we don't question it. Um, so that and, and then my, my family. So like I said, I had a uh, I was a single parent. So I was like, well, if I'm not here, who's going to take care of my daughter? Mm -hmm. Right. So that was probably the second biggest thing. Um, so yeah, that, those two things for sure, um, got, got me through it. But in the process of, of going through that period, um, it, it was odd just, just looking at, thinking about how it happened. Right. So, um, one day this lady just, you know how they had the hospital nurse, not the nurses, the volunteers, cool nurse yes. company. And this is about four months in. Um, they've had all these, they've had little specialists come, like fly in from different eye hospitals, like clinics, to come in and check on little me and my little eyeballs, like to try and figure out <laughs> what was going on, right? Because they had never seen anything like it. So um, so these people they had a doctor come from India, like he didn't speak any English, but he came in and was doing all this stuff. It was like torture to me because, you know, they all, your eyes are very sensitive. So they're like putting stuff in your eyes and looking at them all the time. And they felt like sandpaper, like, like really gritty. And then the light burned them. So it was like a lot of uh, discomfort. Um, and so they got it to the point where I seen a little, like I could see, only thing I could see was like a little, it, it, like almost like a mustard seed of light. That was it. That's the only thing I could see. It was like this little, this little hole of light. So anything I needed to see, I would like try and move it in front of this little hole in my eye to see that that was it. Um, and so this particular day, this, uh, volunteer comes in the room and she's like, Hey, would you like, um, uh, uh, so water, would you like a book or would you like this coloring book? And that's, you know, and I'm like, this lady see me laying in the dark every day. She know I can't see, you know, that was what was going through my mind. <laughs> I was like, let me get the water and let me get that, let me get that coloring book. So she gave, she, so I took the little, the coloring book and this coloring book had Barney on it. It had Big Bird, it had oh. ABC, it had one, two, three, it had something, nothing that looked like me, nothing that okay. resonated with me. Mm -hmm. But I would use that that the book at the time as a tool to try and focus my eyes, mm. right? Um, and then as I would get better, I would use that. I was like, okay, well, if this thing doesn't look like me or resonate with me, um, then I can make my own 
if I could see it, right? So that's all I could keep thinking. Like, if I, you know, one time I could make my own because I could, you know, but I couldn't see it at that time. So I'm like, okay, well, if I, if my eyes get better, I could just can make my own. I can make stuff that looks like me and resonate with me. Um, so time would pass, and then eventually, because of the uh, the, the the depression was so heavy, mm-hmm. I would use journaling, right, to help me try and pass through that. Um, and the journaling, but between the journaling and the coloring book, between the two, those are kind of what helped me um, mentally to try and to me to stay sane. Um, so those two tools together. So once I had my uh, vision back enough where I could see uh, good enough, I would make my own. So I'm like, well, if I have this issue, then my clients will have the, the same issue as well. So hence, I would start making my own for, for myself first. And then years later, I would make them for other people. So it made me realize, one, the gifts that I had um, that I didn't use fully. Right. So it was like um, it was it was it's it's shocking the way, you know, things work. And, and, and God says, listen, I made you to do this this thing and you're not doing it right. Mm-hmm. And to me, the tap on the shoulder was probably the cancer, right? It was like, okay, listen, okay, you, you're done enough. You've done the time in the army. You go, now I need you to focus and do what I need you to do. And I didn't do that. So I think, because in my mind, I was still striving to get back to being in the army, to all get right. back to being all I could be. I mean, I was planning it out. I was like, okay, well, I'm going to do another 20 years. And, and uh-huh. that was my mindset. And I think it just took that shaking uh, from him to say, listen, okay, enough, is, enough of that. <laughs> I need you to think bigger than that. I got yeah. some other things I need you to do. You know, you have these gifts, you have these talents. Um, although you're using them, you're not using them to your full oh, capacity. Right? Right. You're playing with them. Because, you know, I was doing freelance stuff because the Army was my job. So I would freelance, right. do contract stuff on the side. But this, this I think that um, it was, it was, you know, people say things happen to you. I think it happened. This happened for me. It happened yeah. for me to realize the gifts and the talents that I had and, and the purpose that I have while I'm here on this side of heaven. Right. Mm-hmm. So um, for me to tap into that and to use it. Um, so, yeah, it's it, it it's a crazy story. And um, it's um, I guess it's one of those things uh, I'm grateful for. Yes. Absolutely. And, you know, yeah, because it could have happened at any time. So. It's a beautiful story. A couple of things that you said that I'm like, oh. Like journaling. Oh my gosh, journaling saved me too. Yeah. <laughs> yes. When I went journaling through... saved lives. I don't yes. I, it's, yes, it's just journaling. something about getting it out on paper and just mm-hmm. and processing that and having that time. Like when I was going through my deep depression years, years ago, that raggedy little journal <laughs> saved my life. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because yes. it just allowed me to get out. I had a hard time expressing myself. And um, really saying what's wrong, mm-hmm. and, but I could write it on paper. Mm-hmm. And so I just utilized that to write. So y'all out there that's listening, y'all better find you a journal. Yes, yes, <laughs> a, a journal, journal, a notebook, some paper, something. It don't have to be that. fancy just that's to right. get it's, it. Listen, out. I tell people now, like uh, some of my uh, clients, like use your phone, right? Yes. It's no app. Just put it, just put it in there, right? Just, just to get it out. Once you get it out. Um, you feel so much, so much better. But yeah. we hold stuff in. We hold stuff in so much. So we really do. Yeah. Uh, another thing you said that I'm like, oh, was um, your gifts. Just having those gifts. We know what they are. They're there, and we don't always use them to Mm -hmm. their full potential and I can relate not extreme to everything that happened to you but just the using not using the gift that Mm -hmm. well Mm -hmm. Um, I believe that we we know what we're supposed to be doing um like that passion like that passion Mm -hmm. of what we're supposed to do we know what we love to do we may get it buried a little bit in motherhood and and being a wife and all them other things but ultimately we know what it is that we would love to do and we just let everything else jump on top of that or we kind of talk ourselves out of why we shouldn't be doing yes. something and yes. why this is what we need to be like for you you for example you had all the gifts but you're like I'm going to go back to the army mhm I'm going to go back but you already had all you did your time you learned everything the army could teach you and you already had these gifts and the, sometimes, and I'm not gonna lie, when I went through my stuff, I'm like, Lord, why is this so extreme? You doing too much, right? And what my he said, I'm doing this for a reason. 
right, you know, right. I have to make it extreme because had he not made it extreme, I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing today. I wouldn't be helping as many women as I'm helping by sharing their story and this power of healing. So I just think that sometimes, even though it's it's extreme, it's like when you do self-reflection, it, maybe it had to be. Right, right, right. I, I think it has, It uh, for me, obviously it had to be. If I, I'm like <laughs> thinking back, I'm like, man, I was literally walking around the hospital pushing a chemo pole for the army. Like the literally, army. like, girl, quit. Right, <laughs> they replace so, us in a heartbeat. Right in a, in a heartbeat. This I and they. I mean, to this day, I haven't heard anything from them. Right, they they didn't come check. They didn't do any of that stuff. Matter right. of fact, they well, you know how the army is. They give you so much grief because you're going through this thing, and you yes, you um, and Nothing's you're not changed. there. Yeah, so <laughs> it's, it's 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 it it was a trying time. Um, so yeah, so I guess it. it I, well, I know it had to be extreme because. Uh, it took all that to to kind of deprogram me and have me think differently. So, yeah. So, sure. so when you started creating your coloring books, first set of coloring books for yourself, what were your ideas and what did you actually create? Like, what was your first set of books? <laughs> so the uh, so it was just for me. I made some like uh, printouts. It was a it was an army girl and she looked like me. So she, you know, she had features like me, right? Mm -hmm. She had hair like me. So um, so it was an army girl and she had uh affirmations and so it was like a coloring book slash journal. Mm -hmm. So the books we make are like unique, right? So they're like it doesn't have to be just one set thing, it doesn't have to be just coloring pages, it could be a coloring book slash workbook slash uh journal, it could be all the things. Um, and one. so we custom make things to whatever our clients like or need for their clients. So the thing that we make doesn't just help one person, it helps multiple people. So that's the, the gift and the gift that, that I have. Right. So um, but the thing that I made was I was going to therapy. And you know how the therapists give you like sometimes they give you like a little worksheet. Mm -hmm. Right. And so this worksheet was it was just a general like worksheet. So I took it home and I made this look the little army lady. Um, and I put the things that they had on the worksheet on the page. Like, so I took that and recreated it mm -hmm. um, and revived it. Um, and so I would just do that like over and over and, and over again. And then I would question, I was like, man, this coloring thing and journaling really, kind, you know, resonated with me on multiple levels. And so I got curious on the things with colors, why that was so soothing to me. So that's when I went to school and became a uh a therapeutic art coach mm -hmm. uh, because that uh, in itself just kind of really intrigued me. So then I learned about colors and things like that and why uh, certain things in, in the color space resonated with me. Um, so that helped me to, to learn more about myself, but also to help it helped me identify different type of people that I was working with and how I could um, transcribe that for my clients to identify things that they need to look for with their clients. Mm -hmm. So it was really, um, it, I mean, when, you, when I look back on it, I'm like, man, this is rip was really a uh, divine alignment the way it played out, right? I'm like, who would have thought after you know by the time it was all done and over with, uh, with the you know the time in the army and stuff like that, that I would go back to the thing that that I was doing before I even went in to the army. So yeah, <laughs> see, because you already had to get, I already it. had it, right? <laughs> just yeah, just already there. I was just just playing with it all those years. Just just you know, I would do a little contract stuff here and there while I was in. But yeah, afterwards. So now that's you know, I can't see. I, I guess I don't see any other way that it probably would have happened because mm -hmm. I probably, if it was up to me, I probably would have still been in now. That's just yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to get out. <laughs> <laughs> I had my moments, you know, but I had just. I had went, went in and enlisted. So I had did like 18 years enlisted. And then I switched over to the officer side. So I was like, at that point, I was going to start a whole nother career, right? Uh, in. So, um, yeah, I probably would have still been been oh, in. Or until they would have put me out, which they did, right? Because I was like, they were like, just get out. You got 20 years. You got you know? 20 years, yeah. I was like, no, sir. No, ma'am. <laughs> y'all want me out of here. I'm sitting here to y'all put me out. Because I, yeah. you know, I know the struggle. I know what that looks like, you know, mm -hmm. trying to get your benefits. Y'all don't want me here. Y'all going to have to put me out. And they did. <laughs> <laughs> And they did. They was like, girl, you can't wear no gear. Your bones too brittle, you know, from the treatment. You just, yeah. you can't do it. I was like, well, y'all want me out. Y'all got to put me out of here because, uh, yeah, so he, yeah, so they did. They put me out, but they took care of me. So they, rightly so. So, yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. They did. Like, they were like, yeah, you getting up out of here. You, you getting up out of here. Don't worry. Yeah, you don't want to go. Don't worry about it. We got you. We're going to initiate. Right. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. You gonna sign that was that by itself was uh um shoot, I probably could write a book about that, you know, process of what that looked like. Cause you know, when when they gotta put you out, they don't like you. They don't care if it is because of cancer. They do not like you. They like you won't get out. Now you making us work. So mm-hmm. yeah, we're gonna, we gonna give you a little heck. Yeah, we could <laughs> probably do a, a, a lifetime movie about <laughs> our, <laughs> our experiences <laughs> in the military. That man, as a <laughs> as a black woman, <laughs> the idea, they don't want to hear that. They don't want to hear that. Oh my goodness! They don't have a little, you know, uh, be in a position of leadership or something mm-hmm. like that. That's a whole nother thing. That's a oh. whole another ball game yes i don't even want to go there we're gonna have to talk about that (laughs) offline yes (laughs) yes yes you said you still in so we don't want to mess that up yeah we can't we can't mess it up i think i I, looked at time we're talking about right we don't want to mess that up and uh (laughs) to to ironically happen to my check that comes so we'll we'll, we'll leave that alone (laughs) we ain't gonna touch that no we ain't gonna touch it we're not gonna do that we're not gonna do that (laughs) <laughs> oh my goodness. I want to talk a little bit more about you as a therapeutic coach and more about that. People that may not know exactly what that is. Um, can you talk me through kind of what, what it is and what exactly that you do for that? Yeah. So specifically I work with, I only do the therapeutic art culture with, with veterans. All right. So as we know, you know, it. we are a special breed. We, mm-hmm. we just special one. It takes a special person to do what we do. Yes. Um, and a lot of times people discredit that, you know, they think anybody just can sign up, but it's not the signing up part. Um, it takes a lot to sign up to say, OK, well, I'm going to sign my name on this piece of paper and turn my life over to some folks. I don't know. And I have no say on where I go and what I do. Mm-hmm. Right. You might can pick what MOS or what job skill you you want to pursue. But sometimes that don't even work out. Right. Um, you can pick it and then you get somewhere and they say, well, we know you're supposed to be being a mechanic, but I want you to go over here and be a cook. And you can't do nothing but do it, right? But do it. Um, mm-hmm. So it takes special people to, um, we, we just, we're just a weird special breed. Um, so when it comes to communicating, our communication skills are different, right? So sometimes we we put on this, this battle shield because that's what it takes for us to survive. Um, so with therapeutic art, what they're able to do is just come in and just create and just not really, you know, they can communicate without communicating, if that makes sense. So certain colors have certain meanings, certain um, um, the expressions, right? So, you know, if somebody comes in and they splashing a whole bunch of red on a, on on their paper, then you might, that might can tell you something, right? Either they're right. passionate about something or they're driven or they may be, you know, there may be some anger or something going on, right? Mm-hmm. Or if they're doing a whole bunch of yellow, then you know, oh, they're feeling happy, happy, joy, joy, right? So it yeah. just it just depends, right? And you can the same concept can be used with kids where you can you can almost communicate with them or know what how they're feeling without knowing what they're actually what's actually going on with them. Um, but I find a lot of times we're working with with us as veterans, um, we sometimes we say one thing, but we're really feeling something else. Mm-hmm. Right. We just been programmed that way to just uh come you know put things to the side or tuck it away um just to deal with the mission. Right. Just just to deal with the mission. And I know for myself, I served as a, a casualty assistant officer mm-hmm. for several yeah. years. See, right. And that is mo- one of the most rewarding jobs, but it's one of the most stressful jobs, right? Mm-hmm. Because who wants who wants to go knock on somebody's family door and give them bad news, right? Um, and so I did that for years and it, for me, just to do that job, I had to like, just kind of disconnect from that person being a person and just treat it as a mission. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, and that's what we do. We just, we, we like, okay, forget that it's a person behind these things that's happening and let's just get to the mission and get it so we can get it done. And then we are experts in that. I mean, mm-hmm. we are, we have that nailed down. We can camouflage some stuff internally and externally, like nobody's business. Um, so it, it, it helps them to, to take the camouflage off mm-hmm. in, a, in a sense. So um, um, I love being able to do it. And um, I like being able to, to help them. You just give them a moment to take the camouflage off. Now, some of them, when they walk out the door, they may put that stuff back on. But, <laughs> but, yeah. but for those moments that they're, they're in that space, um, they're able to take the camouflage off. I love it. Yeah. 
I love it. I do when you when you're saying camouflage, I'm like, oh my God, it when I put that uniform on, I am a completely different person. It's like everything locks up like <laughs> like I am I, you know, I while I'm walking through the halls, they're like, ma'am, you look so mean. I'm like, my bad, you know, but it's not on purpose. It's because yeah. I have to be a certain way to get what I have to get done. Yes. And it yes. is so protective. And then when I get home and I take it off and I'm like, oh. Lord, but yeah, the moment we put it on, we're just like a different person. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. A different and some person. of us, you know, if you, especially if you, um, after a while, you just that just becomes becomes so routine. You don't you it's it's more of a challenge to to let who you really are mm-hmm. come through versus you let the the soul that you are, you know, be forefront. So it, it took years for me. I mean, years like um, years. Years, yeah, <laughs> you know, yeah. years, and I revert back to it sometimes, and I, I have to catch myself. Like it's okay, like you know, you, your facial expression, especially a woman, a woman of color, you can don't be smiling, right? It's like my face is, yeah, yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. So then I have to learn to be intentional with a smile, right? Or, like, or check myself, like okay, okay, not nah, nah, you know, you don't want to come off as hard or you know, or something like that. So yeah, because that's not my intent, right? That's just how I had to be then for so many years. So mm-hmm. learn how to, to peel that stuff back um, is it's a challenge. It's a challenge. It, it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of work. Yeah. Yeah, you lot. definitely have to be intentional. And just, just in life, like I find myself being intentional, like through through everything because I don't want to be hard. I watch my dad too, because he, he served for 22 years. And so I watched him and it took him a minute to get back into society too. Um, so just watching him and what he's gone through and being intentional and then paperwork wise too, like don't have my dad fill out no paperwork. He's not doing it. So I'm like, dad, you can educate yourself on this stuff. You're missing out on a lot of things that's happening. You know, let's <laughs> come back here. So it's like watching him too. But yes, I have to be intentional about every single part of that. Like smile, girl, fix your, like, fix your face. Fix your face, yes. Y'all. I'm sorry, y'all. <laughs> you know, you know my heart. I'm <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then people don't know you, you know, because a lot in the military, a lot of times people don't get to know you. Mm-hmm. They don't, they know, they just know you as the soldier, right? Or what the person do? that does that job. They don't know you, right? Mm-hmm. And for a lot, especially for me, I didn't know me. I had lost me, mm-hmm. right? The things that I like, the things that I enjoy, the things that I love. But it, it but that's what I had to do t- to do what I did for, for so long, right? For 20, mm-hmm. over 21 years, that's just what I had to become to, to survive. Just keeping the mission at, at, in front of me and what I had to do to make it to the next step, especially if you're trying to excel or trying to um, go up a career ladder. You know, as, as a woman, for one, was a challenge. As a woman of color, is a whole nother thing, challenge. right? Yeah. <laughs> that's a whole nother thing, right? And then a woman in leadership, that's just a whole nother thing because, yeah, they they, you you a woman you a color and you want me to listen to and do what you say they're gonna do it because they have to but they're gonna give you the flux in the process right um they're not gonna make it easy um so that's a whole nother world a whole nother world so yeah, yeah. i yeah. just be like watch me work mm-hmm. <laughs> just mm-hmm. watch me work i can't mm-hmm. even go with, go against that now especially coming into new assignments and trying to start over and building that rapport it is a whole thing that's where i'm at right now i'm like the struggle is real but don't you worry mm-hmm. about it just watch oh, yeah. it work yeah work. <laughs> yeah but it shouldn't be that way right it, should it shouldn't be, be. Like, okay here i am i'm here to do the job what's my what's my assignment what's my job let me do it but no we have to go and not only we have to do our job but we have to prove to them that we can do our we job. can do our job that's <laughs> it yeah i'm like these next 90 days i'm like Ugh. but it's okay i got it yeah <laughs> you got it you got it you got, got it, it. I got it. So I want to talk about you as an author. Do you have a few books? I do. Okay, let's talk I about your book. Several books. So my dad was an author, right? So my dad started the the the, the stuff, right, with the with the book. <laughs> so he was an author, and um, he wrote wrote a lot about um religion because he, he was a pastor. So um, he wrote a lot about religion. So for me, when I decided to write a book. It was, of course, uh, I was like, well, I want to do something different. And so now that I'm in this space, well, I don't have to be so dressed right dress or in a uniform. No, I don't I don't want to do that. I don't want to do stuff that everybody else is doing. Mm-hmm. Right. I, let me do out the box. Let me color outside the lines. Let me figure out how I can be a little creative with it. Right. Or add my own personality to it, which is probably 
stuff that they probably should not have wanted me to unleash, right? <laughs> <laughs> unleash it. <laughs> Just unleash it. So I had to learn to unleash it and um and, and embrace it, right? Mm-hmm. And, and embrace it. Um, so um in that process, I found that that I don't have to, I don't want to write what everybody else writes, right? I don't want to write like that. I don't write a novel. I don't want to write about the you know, some people want to hear about that story. I just got to where I will talk about that over the last year or two. Wow. That's crazy, right? Um, but I was still doing the thing. So I just started using the sto- my, my, my story uh, in, in this type of setting. But um, so I decided when I would write a book, the first thing I did was a color book, of course, right? Of course. <laughs> so the color book uh, with affirmations. Um, <laughs> and the title of that one was called I Decide My Vibe. Do I have one here? That one back there. That one here. Okay. Um, but she, uh, but she is, uh, she's my mantra. Because okay. uh, I refuse to let anybody else in this time um, of my life to decide how I feel. Yeah. Right. Um, I've done that for for years. Right. You know. You, I, I mean, you know, the army tell you almost everything uh, to include you, you. You you're not feeling. You just do the work. Hey, there's no feelings. No feelings involved. So, um, but yeah, that's that's. My mantra, I I decide my vibe. I don't let anybody have that power over me to to make me feel a certain kind of way um, or put me in a box to feel a certain kind of way. So you can do what you want to do, but how I feel about it is my business, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I, to, 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 to do that. So um, I did that one and I did a couple other children's co- uh, coloring books. And then I did, decided to do just journaling because journaling to me was like, you're, you know, the journalists save lives, the journalists yes. save lives. <laughs> So, and, yeah so a whole bunch of journals that that uh just had different pictures that look like me or people that I know or and, and a lot of them are actual pictures so I take you know, uh pictures of people and turn those into color pages okay right so that's um where we make the custom coloring books so we did that and then um I did a couple of um I did I did a couple of uh uh books with I did a poetry book. So, um, yeah, so I took some of the stuff from one of the journals, like with some of the favorite topics, like everything from jet skiing to t- talking about PTSD and depression and all that. And it was just something I just needed to just get out. I, and um, I, so I did that as well. And I was like, well, you know what? You're doing all these other types of books. Let's try that. And so I did that. Um, and I use it now. I do Sometimes I'll go do sp- spoken word and things like that. Um okay with it uh but yeah so that was like one of them books like i'm gonna put it out i don't really um care what people think about it right yeah yeah it'd be like that <laughs> yeah, I'm, gonna just, I'm gonna just do it anyway let's let's, let's just do it um so i did that it, it, it it's like even a poem in there about detroit where i'm from so stuff like that so it was just like some of my favorite things things that are about my dogs how i like dogs more than people because you know? <laughs> they loyal <laughs> Yeah, they they know they don't give me no hard time, you know. <laughs> give them a treat, give them some food, uh, give them a rub, everything, and they just listen. Okay. Love you forever. So, um, so yeah. So being an author, it just lets, allows me to tap in things that I haven't really um, been able to express mm-hmm. over the years. Um, so just let me put that stuff in in writing, and it just lets me to be able to leave a legacy. Um, far beyond what I'll be here. Um, and that's probably one of the biggest things I, I look at life now with. Um, like, how can I impact the world when, when I'm not physically here anymore, right? Yeah. Um, and that's a gift in itself, just to, to, to be able to do something that's going to help other people when I'm not here. Mm-hmm. Right. So the things that I've been able to create over the past few years, they'll be able to still be able to help people even if I'm not here tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Um, so that, uh, when I think about think about it in that regard it's just it it just makes me happy right it makes me happy to know that that the gifts that i have that out that um i'm now in the position to to use um cuz trust me i will not go back to not to not listening and not doing the thing um so right i will not do that and i don't want anybody else to do that so you know now i encourage other people like if you know you're supposed to be doing something <clears throat> do it <laughs> right do it don't 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 let the, the lord tell you yeah, to tell me more more than once mm-hmm. um to do the thing so uh yeah yeah but i um yeah just being an author is a whole different space um and it, it allows me to do 
the thing that I love to do, which is, you know, to to help other people, but it allows me to be creative in a different sense. Um, and then to use those things as tools to be able to go and speak and be able to go empower other people and to be an inspiration to other people. So it's it's a different space. Um, my mother's an author as well. Um, and she does, she has a devotional. Okay. Devotional. So her and my dad both are in the faith-based uh space Sorry. there yeah so their their books are are like that my dad he 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 passed some years ago um but his books are still here right so his yeah. books are yeah right so they're still here um but they I was like well you know that Lord Jesus that's that's not my calling um yeah I don't yeah yeah <laughs> my, my, yeah my ministry is a little different you know so yeah and and rightly so so I'm just glad to be able to be it amongst that that realm of of uh to have to add that title as well, you know, um, but yeah, I, I love being an author. I love it. it. Yeah, I love it because what you're doing is, and I want you guys to listen to everything that she just said. You are doing something outside of the mold, you know, like you, your yeah. business. There it is. I yeah, love yeah, it. Yeah, yes. love it everywhere. So yeah, this is my favorite. So this, uh, I love her- that. Yes. So this was an actual friend of mine and I turned her into a color page. So she is, yeah, oh. so she's my favorite. And listen, I, every time I have to do like a, a photo shoot or something, th- this is my girl. She is with Yay. me everywhere. And it's just, like I said, she's my mantra. Um, and oh I think if I keep, as long as I keep her in my forefront, I, you know, we good. I, I love that. Oh, I love that one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I need so. that one. Yeah. So, so then when I was telling you about the journal, the journal, so this is, this ah. is so this is another one with the custom digital art. And then it's like it. a prompted self-discovery journal. So oh, I said it's, it's different. We we it's a little different. It, it's different. Most people think of a journal, you know, just some lines and some paper. But yeah, I try mm-hmm. and, and do things a little, a little creative, a little different. And that's yeah. different is good. Yeah, it is. Different it is, is good. And that's what I was saying. Like you are doing something that most people, when they start a business, they're going to do cookie cutter. They're going to follow what everybody yeah. else is doing. And you literally was like, I'm going to be expressive. I have so much talent here. I'm going mm-hmm. to go outside of the lines because that's where I belong. I was already in somebody's box and I don't want to be there no exactly. more. And that's what you're doing. And you found exactly. success in that. And so I encourage people to do the thing that you are supposed to be doing add your flavor to it though That's and keep right. going you know don't follow anyone else's path do what you know as scary as it can be being on the other side of that line but that's what you're supposed that's where you're supposed to be you're supposed to, like that's what you're made for right yeah because there's only one you and the thing that you're holding on to can help so many other people right yes. that, and that's and i think that's it took a lot for me to to realize that the thing that i'm holding on to because at first i was just making them for me like i'm just i'm just going home, making them for myself. And I'm like, well, shucks, well, you, you about to get out the army. What you, what you going to do, girl? What you going to do? Yeah. What <laughs> you going to do? <laughs> well, what you going to do now? Retirements look good. You know, all that stuff, you know, so, but what you going to do? You just, what, what you, what you going to do? Um, so hence, that's where I'm like, well, if I'm going to do it, I need to be able to do it, do it my way. Yeah. Right. I need to be able to do it my way. So I did a lot of it for years, like ghost publishing, like just, then nobody, you know, for wow. other people, those other And then a few years ago, you know, the God, Lord was like, listen, we didn't go through all this for you to stay in the bag, right? You know, oh. it, it, come on, it, it, come on, you can, you can do it for yourself. So sure enough, that's when we came to the forefront and stopped ghost publishing. And yeah, and he, here we are. But yeah, I, I love it. We've been able to um, impact so many people's lives and um, just, um Make a gift that just keeps giving. Yes. You know, it, a, a gift that just keeps giving. Um, oh, oh, this, let me show you this one. So this one is a, a kid's book. I love this one it. Is, oh, my God. Yeah, so this lady, she has two autism, two children with autism. Okay. So she's like, well, Lena, I want to do um, do a book for Kennedy and um, Andrew. So this is Andrew. So they both have a book. Both. Oh. He talks through a tablet. So I said, well, let's do a book, you know, about him using his tablet to communicate. 
And so she started a nonprofit, and that's the Autism Angles. Um, she has the books that she used to, you know, to promote, the, uh, well, to educate parents or uh, other people on autism and the dis different spectrum. So he communicates with a uh, tablet. She is like your everyday girl. She's a, a deputant. She works at Chick-fil-A. You know, she's just living life right. Right. Uh, although she has this, uh, I call it a different ability. Yeah. Um, Right. She's still doing the thing. And it's so inspiring. Right. It's, it's just so inspiring um, to just to see that what they do, what they do and how they how they communicate. So um, this is just like some of the work that we've been able to do that I've been able to do to help other people in their, you know, in their ministry or in their calling, you know, in life. And then so she uses that those to educate people. So it's like I said, the gift that keeps He's giving. giving. Are gonna be, yeah, they're going to be here way after little old Lena. Is, you know, <laughs> but they're so beautiful. Yeah. They're so yeah. beautiful and so unique. Oh yeah, I want a book. I want a color. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so yeah. it's and, and there's no limit, right? There's no limit on what the, you know, back in the day when my dad did his book, I remember him writing this book, editing it, and then having to go back and forth with the the publisher on titles and what yeah. it would look like and feel like. You know, it's almost like almost like the military. They wanted it in a certain, certain way. way. Mm -hmm. right? And so we're a little different. We're like, no, you want rainbows and butterflies? Well, we could do that, but we're going to yeah. elevate it. It ain't going to just be no regular There you go. <laughs> we're going to give it to you up here, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I love being able to, to do that, being able to take somebody's, um, their mission and then showing them or help them identify one what type of book is works best for them, and then two how to best use it, right? And mm -hmm. you know, in their in their practice, or use it to serve other people. And that's what we're all called here to do is to serve, to serve, and to help somebody else. And what mm -hmm. other way, and what unique way to be able to help serve or help other people than with a good a book, right? That's gonna leave a good impact and be and be creative, right? And it so that that's been a journey, and it's been fun. And so at this point, I love it. I love it. Thank you for everything that you do. Oh, thank you. Seriously. Thank you My for pleasure. everything that you do, for taking the chance, for listening to your heart, for listening to the Lord. Yeah, listen, <laughs> I don't know what was going to be next to me if I didn't. I, <laughs> I think he was like, listen, you just, you, you not playing. I done gave you uh, a couple chances. Um, Yeah. He probably, I don't know what would have been next. Um, but yeah. Yeah. That, that was, yeah. <laughs> I, I love it. I really do. What advice would you just give to that one person that is just afraid to step out there and take a chance? What would you say to them? Oh, man, if you are afraid to step out there and take a chance, I would say do it scared. Right. Mm -hmm. Do it anyway. Right. Um, what 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 do you have to lose? Yeah. Right. Even even if it doesn't work out to the to the way you think it should work out, it's still going to work out, right? Because mm -hmm. you're going to learn something from it, right? You go, you're going to do it again and you may do it differently. Um, so yeah, just do it anyway. Just just do it anyway. If it's the thing you know you're called to do, do it, right? Just, yeah. just do it. And, and you don't have to do it. I mean, a lot of us, especially now with social media and the internet, we think things have to be so grand. It has to be a certain type of way. Just It doesn't have to, mm -mm. to, to be, it can be whatever you want it to be. However, um, whatever is it within reason for you, just, just do it. Just start off small. It doesn't even have to be small, but just start, just start somewhere. Mm -hmm. start, just do it. Just do it. Just, just do it. Do it. Yes. Can you let the audience know where they can find you? Absolutely. So you can find me at yourartisticexpressions.com. Yep. So that's yourartisticexpressions.com. And then there you'll get a free book, a free ebook on uh, five reasons why authors, coaches, and consultants should create additional streams of income using custom coloring books, workbooks, and self-help books. Yeah. So that's one of the unique things about us. We say, okay, we'd have created this thing for you. Now let's see how we can make, make it profitable. Mm -hmm. Make so, that money. Know, make that money. You know, I don't care what, what area, what niche you in, everybody needs some money to make, make these missions go. Right. Mm -hmm. So we, uh, can we, we specialize in that. So we make the thing and then we show you how to make the money, right? Yes. Twofold. Twofold. <laughs> yes, yes. I yes. love so, it. And some people just want to make the thing, right? Because they want to leave a legacy. But if you and you can do that too, that's fine. But for those who need to make the money, that is a bonus. You know, that's a good bonus. Yes. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. And I'll make sure that everything is linked in the show notes so they can just click and get that ebook. 
and get on your way. Yeah, you've been awesome. I'm Thank so you. happy to have you on my journey on um, being a part of the Beauty in You podcast. Like I said, you've been wonderful. Thank you for having me so much. It has indeed been a pleasure. All right, you guys. Until next time.